It tells us that Matt and Ben are going to play the following price competition game repeatedly. So usually we're dealing with a one-shot game. Now we're dealing with a game that happens multiple times. It says, assuming that the probability that the game will end after any given period is 0.19, and then it asks, what is the highest discount rate at which cooperation can be sustained as an equilibrium if these players are playing grim trigger strategies? Well, first let's talk about why it's important that we can't know the end of the game. If we knew this game was 10 periods, let's say, so there's a finite end to the game, well then cooperation can never be sustained. He calls this unraveling. What it means is, if we know the game is going to end in period 10, well then in period 9 we're going to cheat, because we know the game is going to end in period 10. Well both players know this, so both players know that we're going to cheat in period 9, we might as well cheat in, in period 8 to anticipate for that cheating in, player in period 9. This ends up happening every period preceding, and we never end up having cooperation. We cheat every period because we knew the end of the game. So cooperation can only be sustained if we don't know when the game's going to end, that there's some indefinite number of periods. So let's take a look at what we're given. We're given F, which is the probability that the game will end, which is 0.19. So even though we don't know the, when the game will end, we know that there's a 19% chance after every round it could end. And we're looking for R, the discount rate. For either player, we can conclude that cooperation is equal to $12 per period. Let's take a look at how we found this. One way you can look at it is when both players play soft, it sounds like that's cooperating. They're not playing hard against each other. They're, they're both playing soft. They both earn 12. And that's fine if you'd like to remember it that way. But the better way to remember it is look at the box where aggregate industry profit is highest. So total industry profit, which is Matt's profit added to Ben's profit, is highest. That bottom right box, we see 12 plus 12 is 24. That's the highest amount of profit combined. The top right box is 18 plus 4, that's only 22, and 8 plus 8 is 16. So that's the correct way to look at it, when aggregate industry profit is the highest, that's when they're cooperating. We know that cheating is 18, because cheating is defined as, I've convinced you to play soft, we're supposed to be cooperating, and I'm going to play hard instead, I'm going to cheat. So when you play soft and I play hard, I get 18. And then we've already talked about uh, a Nash equilibrium, in this case is $8. Let's look at how we found that again. This is the two stars in one box. This is the one shot Nash equilibrium. Both of these players we see have a dominant strategy to play hard. Because for Matt, we go around to the top and say, well, if Ben plays hard, what will Matt do? He'll choose 8 over 4. If Ben plays soft, what will Matt do? He'll choose 18 over 12. So we see that Matt is always going to play hard no matter what. Ben will do the same thing. If Matt plays hard, I'm going to choose 8 over 4. If Matt plays soft, I'm choosing 18 over 12. Ben also will always play hard. Because of that, in the one-shot game, they will always end up in the top left box. We call that our one-shot Nash equilibrium. These are the three payments we need to know to solve this problem. Now, the question said that we're playing Grim Trigger strategy, so let's define that. A Grim Trigger strategy says, I will cooperate with you indefinitely unless you ever cheat. If you cheat, I will never trust you again and I will punish you forever. So with Grim Triggers, we know that as long as you cooperate, cooperation is going to be sustained. We're going to always cooperate with you. But the second you burn that bridge, the second you cheat against me, you, you've lost my trust forever. I will never trust you again. I will play hard from forever on out, every period. This is different than a tit-for-tat strategy. So just remember that we don't need that in this question, but a tit-for-tat strategy says, I'll do this period what you did last period. Again, I'll do right now what you did last period. That's tit for tat. And we're dealing with the Grim Trigger strategy, so just know the difference between those two. Now, with Grim Trigger in mind, we know that if we cooperate, we're going to have cooperation every period. So we need to have some device to bring a future stream of cash flows to the present value. And that's what we're going to use this for. 1 plus R over R plus F. This tells us the present value of a stream of future cash flows, and it depends on the discount rate and the probability of the game ending. So remember from finance, the discount rate told us that a dollar today isn't worth a dollar tomorrow, time value of money, and we usually had T in our equation, which was time. Well, now we don't know when the game's gonna end. We don't know what period we're gonna be discounting back. Instead, we just know the probability of the game ending. So 
we're using the discount rate and the probability of the game ending to bring a future stream of identical cash flows back to the present value. What we're going to do is we're going to set the gains from cooperating equal to the gains from cheating to find the indifference point between cheating and cooperating. And this is how we will solve for the highest discount rate at which cooperation can be sustained, assuming the probability of the game ending is 0.19. So in the next question, they give us R and we're solving for F. In this question, they've given us F and we're solving for R. There's only one video, but it answers. If you know how to do it, you'll be able to answer both questions. So again, we're setting cooperating equal to cheating to solve. So let's take a look at what cooperating means. Well, I'm going to draw a timeline to help us really organize our thoughts. And again, we don't know how long this game goes on. There's nothing significant about the three periods here. It could end next period. There's a 19% chance it won't even be happening next period. So keep that in mind. If we cooperate, we're going to get $12 this period, $12 next period, and they're, they're on out because we're using Grim Trigger strategy. So as long as you co cooperate against me, I'll always cooperate against you. I'll always play soft against you. Well, how do we represent this in time period zero? We use our 1 plus R over R plus F multiplied by 12. So cheating, cheating looks like this. In year zero, we cheat. We get 18 right now. And then in year one, you'll never trust us again. The other guy will never trust us again. So he'll always play hard. Well, then it's in our best interest to play hard as well because we're not going to play soft and get four while he gets 18. We're going to play hard and get eight from then on out. So Grim Trigger Strategy says he'll never trust us again and always play hard. Therefore, we're going to want to end up at the Nash Equilibrium payment of eight. So what does this look like as an equation? Well, we have the $18 that we get right now. Then we're going to make $8 indefinitely into the future. But we didn't make that $8 in time period zero. If you look at time period zero, we made $18. So that's why we have the minus eight out to the right because this is saying the eight times the one plus R over R plus F, that's assuming that we made eight starting in year zero into the future indefinitely, but we didn't make it in year zero. So we have to subtract away that eight. So make sure you understand that. Well, now that we have both of those, I'm gonna do a little trick just to make the algebra easier. I'm gonna say that let's define one plus R over R plus F as X. This is just, you don't have to do this. This is just to make the algebra easier. And I'm going to set cooperating equal to cheating. So 12x is equal to 18 minus 8x minus 8. I can clean this up and combine like terms and solve for x to be 2.5. I remember that x is just 1 plus r over r plus f, where f I have has been given to me as 0.19. So I can go ahead and plug that in. Now I'm going to cross multiply and start to solve this thing. I work through the algebra and I find that the highest discount rate at which cooperation can be sustained is 0.35. So that's telling us a couple things that we need to just understand. If the discount rate was any higher, say 0.36, cooperation could not be sustained. So we would cheat. So the discount rate was 0.4, we would cheat. If the discount rate was 0.3, we would cooperate. 0.35 is the highest discount rate at which cooperation can be sustained.